Boudet's here, and uh, two very experienced Championship League Different campaigners plan. here, Judd Trump, Judd Trump the break. and Ricky Walden. Walden, I'm sure, was disappointed not to reach the final last night. He had a good chance to beat Selt, but he gets to do it all again. And it's always great to see Judd Trump, of course, coming in three times a winner of this Championship League. Phil Yates alongside me, looking forward to another two days. It's always fascinating to see how the new players will fare, Phil. Yeah, it is, and what an infusion of talent we have. Gary Wilson, recent ranking event winner, north of the border. And two world champions, John Higgins, and of course the man coming to the table now. Three world champions in total in the group, and all seven players have won at least one world ranking tournament. Yeah, great quality. Trump, of course, uh, like all the players looking to kickstart the campaign here in the new year. He's got the Masters next week, takes on Ryan Day in round one. But he's always done well in this event. He's always um, these short matches. I mean, he's he's actually well known also for doing well in the best of seven events. But these best of fives, maybe just uh, the sort of hangover from when he was a junior, when he used to win so many of the tournaments that were played over this format, helped being really good. Also, <laughs> Ricky Walden, of course, one advantage he does have, even though obviously he wanted to win last night, and get into the winners' group. He's, he's used to the conditions for sure. So that may be help early on we'll see he's played well he topped the group yesterday five wins out of six just lost out to Selt in that uh, semi-final What a shot that was. The Q arm, the Q, everything just delivered ideally. Peter Lyons told us a story about his son Oliver going down to practice with Judd recently. They had 25 frames and Trump made 17 centuries. Now, six. obviously it's different in a match environment. I get the feeling he's in pretty good nick. Seven. Yeah, he's trying to obviously get back to winning titles. He won so many over a three-year period. 14 ranking events in three seasons. In last season, it just dried up a little. He won the new Turkish Masters. He won the Champion of Champions. He reached the World Championship final. Now, most players would say that was a really good 12. season with the standard as it is, but obviously... He's being judged by what he'd done previously, so it seemed a disappointing campaign. He's yet to win a title this season. He's yet to really get close to winning one. He did get to the Champion of Champions final, of course, made a maximum, but Ronnie O'Sullivan beat him in that. So we're about halfway through the season. There's a lot of big tournaments coming up, and this would be a great time to hit form again. I think an interesting point, Dave. As you say, he did well in the Champion of Champions. I Ultimately, did. not quite well enough but that tournament is played on rass on tables and so is this 21 and when he was in Bolton I know that he was expressing how much he enjoyed these particular tables so maybe he's going to relish them again Yeah, if you look at his season, I mean, it's a season I say a lot of players will be really happy with. He's been in the quarterfinals of three ranked events, a couple of last 16s, you know, he's been very consistent, but at his level, he's not looking for consistency, he's looking to win. And he's just, because points have been coming off as well on the two-year system, he's just slipped down to number four in the world as well. But, listen, one good week, it can all turn around, and you feel it will. I really hope so, because when Trump's involved in the latter stages 36. of tournaments and he's playing his best, it's a joy to behold. 37. Of course, he's now a superstar. Back in 2009, when he won the Championship 44. League for... 
the first of three occasions. That was a big breakthrough for him. And he played Walden twice that year in the Championship League on the way to lifting the trophy. Thanks. Remarkably, this is their 15th meeting in this tournament. 9-5 it is in wins to Trump. In 2018, they played in the Championship League in that year alone six times. Well, it's been a re-rack on table two, so this is the uh, the restart for Gary Wilson and uh, Robert Milkins. The first frame re-racked. He, he didn't quite look on that red, and he sort of tried to convince himself to he could still pot 52. it. He looked like he'd come too far initially. And having caught the incorrect red, he's very lucky not to leave anything on. Yeah, just on that uh, 2009 Championship League win for Trump. I think that was a very significant win. It was the first tournament he'd won that featured other top players. You know, he was only 19. He was still a junior. He was well regarded, but obviously, you know, he still had to come through and, and, and do something. And the fact that he was in the winners' group, surrounded by big names, he beat Selby in the final, was a sign that he can handle the pressure against the top players. And, you know, it wasn't that long after that, was it? A couple of years he won the China Open world final and then ever since then he's been a top player well another wonderful pot these are good signs first what? snooker of the year for Trump he's not been away over the, the festive period Looks to me, Dave, as though he might have gone in some practice. Eight. Well, there's another big shot coming up here. There's a red in the middle there that goes to the corner. But he's going to have to get it. And he's duly got it. No. Kimball could have finished in a kinder spot. The frame's not done yet, he's, he's still, well, he's 61 in front, 75 on. Could push a colour safe. I'm sure that's always <laughs> the way he would want to play the game, but that's kind of the percentage thing Yellow to do. Ball. That's what he is doing. Judge on, no. Clever shot, not just putting the yellow safe, but tying up a red also. has left this red sticking out, mind you. But now the frame should be over. Yeah, it's very early days, but I talk about Walden having the advantage of having, you know, got used to conditions, but sometimes you see players who One. have come close to winning a group and not done it. The next day, it takes a bit of time to just get back on the horse. And... Uh, Walden has made little impact on this first frame so far. Whereas Trump looks really sharp. Eight.
29. So the 52 earlier on put a dent in the frame. As I say, Walden has struggled to make an impact on it. Trump's looking good, though. He leads already 1-0. for Group 4 of the Bet Victor Championship League. Ricky Walden didn't have much of a look in, in frame one. Judd Trump already on the scoreboard. The second frame. Ricky Walden the break. 29. Just avoids the blue. And when you do that, you're OK. Although, I think from distance today, Trump looks as though he's going to be mustered. Not a bad effort there. Looking at the rankings, Dave, between frames, starts 2023 as the world number four, does Trump. On the one-year list, he's 10th. So he's not exactly guaranteed to be in the Players' Championship, and he's got work to do to be in the Tour Championship. And that's hard to comprehend, really. I think he will be at the players, but he's not certain. No, well, he didn't qualify, did he, for Germany, in the German Masters. So, you know, he's not going to be able to pile up the points there. So he, he needs a good performance at the World Grand Prix. It's also the, the Welsh Open. He doesn't play in the shootout. There'll be no points there either. Yeah, I mean, if he's not in the Tour Championship, that would be a surprise. Although <laughs> there's a few, actually. Ronnie O'Sullivan, Neil Robertson are outside that. That cut off at the moment. There's a lot can change between now and March. Turkish Masters, of course, Trump's defending that title. chance this <laughs> seems unfair that one <laughs> when you're so good at long potting I also remember one match at the UK championship involving Trump and our co-commentator today Dominic Dale and he had two outrageous flukes in successive frames I felt really sorry for for Dom because from those flukes he just flew well feel free to bring it up with Dominic later on He looks very business-like here. As I say, the, the, the festive break is over. When the new year comes, it's really the starting gun for the run into the World Championship. And there's a lot of big tournaments before that. But mines start to turn towards the Crucible as the weeks head on into April. Six. Seven. Last year he went there not feeling good. 
talking even about having a break from the game, but it's funny how things work out. He got to the final. He didn't necessarily, I don't think, play his best snooker all through the event, but he won that extraordinary semi-final with Mark Williams. He was sort of just trying to hold Mark off as he was charging at him, knocking everything in, and he did beat him 17-16. I think that maybe that affected the start of the final for him. But that's all part of the World Championship. Played great in the third session, didn't he? You know, it, it, people were talking session to spare when we started day two, but he won the, se the third session 6-2. Put pressure on O'Sullivan, and O'Sullivan very impressively responded. Thirteen. Generally, as he gets a good kiss there, generally, snooker players rely heavily on confidence. Trump is no exception. And I think if he plays well these next couple of days, 18. it could be hugely beneficial. What I've noticed, Dave, technically, is that 19. he's delivering the cue with great authority. There's no hint of any tentative delivery. No, this is the Joe Trump that his fans love to watch. You know, he's got these balls open very quickly again. 24. Looking to kill the frame off in a single visit. Now, I'll tell you what, he sussed this table out. You couldn't do that on a lot of tables. It's so reactive. And he didn't hit that cue ball very hard, and yet he was still able to stun across the face of the black, and now he's in absolutely prime position. Very swiftly, he 32. could lead 2-0. I would go so far as to say he should lead 2-0. Talking about the World Championship, Phil, I've had a message from Kelly Barker, one of the great snooker fans uh, and ever-present at the Crucible for many years, the spectator, and she informs me today it's 100 days to the start of the World Championship, the Crucible stage. So, uh, counting awesome. down the days, Kelly, nice to hear from you. Yeah, what a star, Kelly. Loves the game. She also has a very important role to play. She uh, uh, fact checks the uh, Crucible Almanac that Chris Downer does. So uh, you know, that's a very important job because that's an extraordinary st statistical tome that Chris produces every year. Well, I'm not 47. unveiling any trade secrets for us, Dave. It's invaluable, isn't it? Priceless. Now, table two not moving along quite so quickly. They have had a, a re-rack there, of course, 52. but he's still frame one. Gary Wilson coming in today, the Scottish Open champion, and he, he's 30 points in front against Robert Milkins, but ball's a little awkward three. there. <coughs> but Judd Trump is motoring towards a 2 0 lead. Sixty. Sixty-one. Snooker's required already. Just a question whether Judge Trump can kick off the new year with a, a century here in frame two. He's involved in a little, I say battle, I don't think they see it that way, but there's a three-way sort of fight to become the second player to a thousand centuries. Sixty-nine. Obviously, Ronnie O'Sullivan got through uh, that milestone a few years ago in Preston. Judge Trump's on 878. Two ahead of Neil Robertson, and just behind John Higgins on 910. So, 76. One of those three will be the next one. 77. At some point in the next couple of years. Purely based on the the age of John Higgins, I would say that for me it would be Trample Robertson joint favourite. 82. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard to say because actually last last season just on the centuries last season. Actually, it was Robertson 61, Higgins 58, 
Trump 48. But anyway, we will find out who is the Buzz Aldrin of that particular <laughs> stat. But this is great stuff, meanwhile, from Trump. And, you know, if he carries on playing like this, he could get there quickly. 85. Got the safe red out off the cushion. So now, surely the century is forthcoming. He seems to be really enjoying himself as well this morning. Already seen 57 centuries in the first three groups. 20 in group one, 19 in group two. Oh, sorry, 21 in Group 1, 88. 19 in Group 2, and 17 in Group 3. 90. Well, you just feel there's going to be plenty in this group, don't you? Matt Seltz had 12, hasn't he, already, himself? Coming back for Group 4 today. 93. So, Judd Trump has hit the ground running, dominated Frame 1. Seems to be queuing really confidently here this morning as he kicks off 2023. Hoping, of course, for titles. 97. And to win titles, you need confidence. And playing like this will give him plenty of that. A century in frame two. It's a tournament he just always seems to play well in. This championship league. Change of hands for the black. 108 and a second frame. So, Judd Trump. Judd Trump, helped by that fluke right at the start, with 108, leads Ricky Walden 2-0. So 108 from Judd Trump, very impressive break it was as well. He looks really confident making it. He leads 2-0 already, one more frame, and he frame. takes his first That's point from this fourth group of the Championship League. But this isn't the first time that Ricky Walden has felt the full force of Trump's break-building prowess when they met in the last 16 of the World Championship in 2018 Trump had four centuries and I think what David Hendon was saying about the, the psychological hangover having been close to winning a group the previous evening and not quite getting over the line you do see players struggle early on in the following group and I think that might be the case here with Walden. Well, yeah, I mean, he certainly should have been in the final, shouldn't he? You know, he missed that yellow out of nowhere. A few balls from beating Matt Selt 3-1. We'll never know if he'd have beaten Karen Wilson or not, but just that feeling, I'm sure, as he went back to the hotel as Trump takes that on, that he should have been in the final. But he's got a chance here. It was a little bit all or nothing, that last shot. Obviously hoping the red would be covered here, but it's not. So can Ricky Walden get going finally this morning? Still in the first frame, by the way, on uh, on table two. One. There's only one colour on its spot, so he's not looking too too hopeful there. Just the pink hanging on. <laughs> John Pelu once again has drawn the short straw, hasn't he, the referee? <laughs> yeah, and we must bear in mind that's Gary Wilson against Rob Milkins, two players who traditionally get on with it. So an unusual frame for those two to be involved in. That's the thing, if, if balls start going a little scrappy, then, you know, it becomes more difficult. You can watch it on, of course, the Matchroom YouTube channel and Matchroom Live. Cannon didn't work out well, for a split second it looked as though he might at least have a a red to middle and then 
another red got in the way. Ricky Walton, 12th. When a red has got to travel a reasonable distance to hit a cushion to be doubled, they are so tough to judge. The reason Walden played it like that, it was trying to be a shot to nothing, but he has left a red to middle. Oh, dear One. me. You always want to start off with a win in these groups. A 3-0 win, that's extra gravy. Yeah, and he gets to stay on as well and play match two against Mark Selby. I still got this red to the middle. 14. A bit awkward, just getting to the cue ball. Trump's at an interesting stage in his career. It's sort of the middle of his career, isn't it? The prime years. He's 33. Now, there was a time when that would be considered old in snooker, but a lot of his main rivals are older than him. Ronnie O'Sullivan, John Higgins, Mark Williams, the class of 92, all 47. Neil Robertson, 20. he's 40. Mark Selby turns 40 this year. Sean Murphy, also 40. So, in comparison to them, he is uh, a young man. And there isn't the sort of wave of 20-somethings coming through to threaten him. Problem is, though, those 40-somethings I mentioned are all still really good. And he's just... Meanwhile, well, he's not on the black. 21. If he's on the pink to the middle, then he's OK to continue. Yeah, I just needed to make contact on the red. He came wide off. The reason he didn't make absolutely sure... Had he come a little narrow, he would have hit the black first, and that would have been not in his favour. But side is tweaked on, and the pink goes in without touching the sides. 27. Yeah, I mean, you see from the overhead, he needed to just put a bit on the cue ball there. Played it really well. Lots of side to widen the angle off the cushion. It's a small sample size, yes, but he seems to be hitting the ball so nicely. 34. Yeah, I mean, I think he's always had a good attitude to this tournament. He doesn't come here out of a sense of sort of, oh, I've got to play in another tournament. He wants to be here. He wants to win the event, obviously. But it's also about getting confidence up, getting form going ahead of uh, the Masters. He always seems to come into this week. He's always here the week before the Masters. It doesn't always mean he's going to win the tournament, obviously, but it's about trying to get up ahead of steam and get his cue arm going for, for the new year. Won the Masters back in 2019. Nearly got to the final last year, didn't he? Barry Hawkins beat him in the semis, 6-5. This year he starts out against Ryan Day in round one.
50. Well, Walden did have a chance in this frame, but he didn't come to much, and he's, I'm sure, fearing the worst. He's not quite over the line yet, 38 in front, still a bit of work to do, but just the confident way he's playing, you sort of feel he'll find a way here. Yeah, Walden will be watching the Masters, and he'll be in the same position next week as he is right now, watching this. Trump's dominated. He's getting better and better with the alternative hand. He's played a couple of really good shots in this match. 56. Table one is flying. Table two, not so. No, snooker's needed there by the milkman, but uh, this, this match with Trump could be over before frame one on table two. <laughs> in fact, it's quite likely now. This red fill is the is match ball. We started thirty five minutes 64. ago. It's been a terrific display from Joe Trump. Wonderful start from him. You're never quite sure, obviously, coming back New Year, blowing off cobwebs. Well, I think we can say they're well and truly blown off by this display. And he's got a chance to make a second century here. Now, where's this pink going? Yeah, he knew straight away that that was going to mess things up. He could try it. He could play the double, I guess, to the left middle here to try and keep it going. Either way, though, it's been a terrific performance. It's not in now. Walden, is he going to play on 59 behind? Trump, Trump 71. I feel he, he has to, I guess, but that 71 break should ensure a 3 0 victory for Judd Trump. And as you pointed out, he plays next. Yeah, and he's going to be out in only five minutes' time because Ricky Walden left the red onto the middle and has conceded. Judd Trump's played terrifically well. Breaks of 52, 108 and 71. He beats Ricky Walden 3-0. He'll be back shortly to take on Mark Selby.